I cannot stand this thing. It was a waste of like $30. I wish I can get that $30 back. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Suzette Says here and I'm back with another mommy to mommy video. Today's video I'm really excited about because it is the second video that's part of my breastfeeding 101 series. The first video that I did was basically me giving you 10 things to consider before you actually start your breastfeeding journey. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm actually going to be breaking down some of the popular breastfeeding items that's out there on the market, things that moms usually want to go out and buy or put on their registry. And I'm going to be telling you whether it's a must or a bust. I have been breastfeeding for like two and a half years of my life straight <laughs> my son i breastfed him for like 26 months and my daughter is 10 months now so i tandem breastfed at one point and i'm still breastfeeding my 10 month old daughter with that being said over time i've built up quite a nice little inventory of products and some things i feel have been really really great and worth their money and some things it's just like eh that could have stayed on the shelf in the store. I do want you to keep in mind that as you watch this video, and I've said this before in my previous video, that every mom is different, every baby is different, and therefore every breastfeeding journey is going to be different. Kind of take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm going to try to be as unbiased as I possibly can, and if something I feel is a bust, I'm definitely gonna explain why. And maybe it being a deal breaker for me may not necessarily be a deal breaker for you. So with that being said, let's go on and jump right into this video. First thing that I'm going to talk about is an electronic breast pump. The one that I have is by Medela. There's plenty of electric breast pumps on the market. So I'm not necessarily trying to sponsor or promote anything that's in this video. So when it comes to electronic breast pumps, I feel that, and this even happened to me as a new mom, that's like one of the top coveted items that you really want. You go out and put it on your registry, and if you don't get it, you go out and buy it. So hands down, I have to say that for me, having the electronic breast pump was an absolute must. It has helped me so, so much. And I'm a stay-at-home mom now, but when I first had my son Carter, I went back to work after six weeks. And there's no way that I would have been able to make it without this thing. Like this pump right here has been with me through everything. Me and this pump have shared some intimate times. <laughs> and intimate places the cleanest of the clean and dirtiest of the dirtiest so i'm really thankful to have had this pump next product is this manual pump i didn't I actually didn't pay for this the hospital that i gave birth at were giving manual breast pumps to all of the moms so when i had carter i went home with like three of these some people may not be so wild about manual breast pumps because it's manual so you have to do all of the work and then you can only do one breast at a time whereas the electronic double pumps you can finish much quicker and they are a little bit more efficient they're more powerful and it's less work on you so a lot of moms i feel like don't always tend to want to put these on their registry let me tell you this right here is an absolute must I never ever thought that I would need a manual pump. I didn't want one. I never registered for one. And this baby right here is Bay. All right. <laughs> this has helped me in a clutch in some of the most random, random times. And I'm going to tell you why. When I first got home with Carter, and I explained in my previous video, I had a really hard time with like latch issues 
and so I was pumping right away and even though I had my electric pump it was really nice to have this sometimes when I would get engorged and I really just wanted to release one breast I would just go ahead and be sitting there and I can have the baby feeding and then I would just pump there was times when I went back to work and I would forget my electronic pump at home as a mom and you're traveling and you got to commute and you got to drop the baby off and you got to get to work by a certain time and you're making sure that you've got bottles and the baby bag and packing multiple bags because you still need your bag for work there was like two times when I left my electronic pump at home and literally one time I had to leave work because I was just in so much pain and I was like this job does not pay me enough to be affecting my milk supply I was like I gotta leave after the second time of leaving my electronic breast pump at home I winded up leaving one of these manual pumps in my office so that way if I forgot my electronic pump I always had a pump on hand or I would leave it in the glove compartment of my car and if I went somewhere and I realized I didn't have a pump or I was going to be longer than I thought this thing has come through. I remember my husband's cousin had a birthday party and it was at a place I didn't know if there would be a location for me to pump at. So I was like, I'll bring the manual pump because not every place you're going to be able to go with the electronic pump and you're going to have it on your lap and set it up. Like literally, I was in the bathroom stall, standing up, pumping and listening to music like, so yes, when it comes to a manual pump, absolutely, absolutely a must. If I had to compare both items of whether to get one or the other, I would definitely say register for both. But if the idea of breastfeeding is new to you, start off with the manual pump first because I know so many women who have said, I'm breastfeeding and that's it, I'm not gonna do anything else. But then after a month, they're like, you know what, I'm completely done and electronic breast pumps are so expensive unless you can get it with your insurance then that's fine that's another story if you don't have to pay for it but if you have a gift card or you have to come out of your own pocket you can use that money on something else i would say hold off on getting the electronic breast pump until you absolutely know that breastfeeding is for you the next item that i am going to be talking about is this guy right here Zibapi. <laughs> what can I say about the Bobby? It didn't really work for me. In my opinion, I feel like it's a bust. Mm. I absolutely don't think that you need the Bobby to breastfeed. I would say put it on your registry. Every baby is different. The Bobby is not just something that you can use to breastfeed, but I never used it for that long with either of my kids and my daughter absolutely hated the Bobby. She never wanted to even like lay in it. Aside from me ever using it with breastfeeding, like she just didn't like it. When I had a lactation come to my house in the very beginning with my son, when I was experiencing latching issues, she showed me ways to breastfeed with the Bobby that made it very comfortable and it seemed like a really good idea at the time but once I got comfortable with breastfeeding I just never really needed it it was just so much easier to just hold him in my arms or use the pillows that were on the couch and things like that so for breastfeeding I'm gonna go and say that the poppy is a bust maybe you might like it but for me nah so the next item on my list are these little babies right here. This is nursing tank tops. They have like a little snap and so you can snap them and it basically just exposes your nipple so that the baby can latch on and then when they're done you can snap them on. In my opinion, I think that nursing tank tops are a must. I absolutely love them. And just for the record, like I didn't go out and buy a bunch of nursing outfits. I don't even own any nursing shirts. But nursing tank tops were really helpful for me in the beginning, especially for sleeping because after you have your baby and your milk comes in, you can't sleep without 
a shirt and you definitely want to have on something that's gonna support you and you're gonna be nursing at night so you want something that's gonna be fast access to the baby and I personally don't like sleeping in bras so the nursing tank tops were amazing especially even in the daytime just having them on throughout the house they were comfortable and they were great. Now I wouldn't say go out and buy a whole bunch of nursing tank tops. I think I have like three or four of them and I just kind of washed them and rotated them and they really, really were helpful for me. And depending on how lusty you are, you can even just wear a regular tank top. I also did that. On a side note, then this is not a nursing item, but I used tube tops a lot too to sleep in or in the daytime when nobody was home and i wasn't expecting company these were also really great for me to sleep in because it was just very comfortable and i'm not very busty even when my milk came in my breasts were full but they weren't like gigantic so these worked really well and i was still able to put nursing pads in them so that i wasn't leaking on the bed because there is nothing like waking up in the middle of the night and your bed sheets are soaked from milk <laughs> this is actually a belly band and after i was pregnant i used it as a tube top so tube tops were really helpful for me to sleep into. Not a nursing item, but I used it for nursing in case you don't want to go out and get a whole bunch of nursing tank tops. That kind of leads me to the next item, which is nursing bras. My take on nursing bras is that I feel they are a must. Like I said, I don't like sleeping in bras, so I never slept in a nursing bra. Some women may want to or have to. Like I said, if you're more bustier and you need the support, then sleeping in a bra might be really helpful for you. These were really good for me when I would go out in public. It was just easier to be able to lift my shirt and then I wouldn't have to expose my whole boob because again, just like with the nursing tank tops, they snap down and then it pretty much just exposes the nipple for the baby to latch on. You don't have to splurge on nursing bras. Target has really affordable ones. Also, Zulily usually has a lot of sales where you can get them for like $10, which is amazing for a bra. As you kind of progress, and get further in your nursing journey, you can actually go back to wearing regular bras. I nursed my daughter, like I said, at 10 months, and I have reverted to wearing my regular old bras again. And, you know, I'll just lift up the whole bra and let her go at it. But in the beginning, especially if you are a little apprehensive about nursing in public, they make it so that you can do it a little bit more um, modest, I guess and just more convenient so yeah a must <laughs> the next thing on my list this looks so spooky <laughs> looking at it in the camera oh my gosh it looks like a mask <laughs> hello <laughs> this is a pumping bra <sighs> This has got to be probably an item that I have wasted. I, I just, I hate this thing. This thing makes absolutely no sense. This is a major bust. Mm. I cannot stand this thing. It was a waste of $30. I wish I can get that $30 back. But um, yeah, in the beginning, I thought that I would need it. Um, this allows you to pump and be hands free. But the idea of it, in theory, it kind of seems good, but the practicality of it is stupid. It makes absolutely no sense. Think about the person who might need to be hands-free and pumping. I could see if like maybe you work from home and so you're not really wearing clothes all day, then maybe something like this will work for you because if you're at home, you have time to actually put this on and there's no rush to actually go and do something else but if you are a working mom the ideology behind this is so stupid so when you go back to work you're already taking several different breaks throughout your day to nurse 
and the last thing you want to do is be wasting time you already have to get your bag set your bottles up get everything prepared actually pump then when you pump you got to take the bottles apart clean everything up and you got to get back to work you know people are like you know i know when i was at work people would be calling me like where's suzette where's suzette I'm like, I'm, I'm pumping, I'm pumping milk. So I would try to do it as rapidly as possible. First of all, you're not gonna wear this all day, okay? You're not wearing this over your bra or under your bra. So to go and take your break to pump and then you have to raise your shirt or unbutton your blouse, take your bra off, put this on. And the, the contraption with this is just ridiculous. You have to put it on a certain way and then you have to have the tube inserted in a certain way it's absolutely stupid do not get this okay just don't just don't do it like nobody has the time for this thing and if you really needed a hands-free bra there's so many different life hacks to where you can use a sports bra and cut a hole in it and it serves the same purpose as this but this oh I only saved this thing just to film this video. That way I would be able to show it as I was filming it. But this is going to be my new dish rag. So say hello to my new dish rag. Ugh, garbage. The next thing on my breastfeeding items must or bust list are nursing pads. For me, I definitely have to say that this is a must. Oh my gosh. Maybe not everybody, but I certainly had really strong letdowns and very, very leaky boobs. And I think I w at one point I was like an oversupplier. So these things have saved plenty of shirts, plenty of sheet, plenty of everything. After a while, I didn't need them anymore. Like once my milk kind of regulated itself. And then there's kind of little tricks that you learn along the way that if you are feeding the baby and you have a letdown on one side, you kind of learn how to stop that letdown before it, you know, makes a wet t-shirt contest of your shirt. But definitely, I would say for like the first four months after I had my son, these were like my holy grail item. These are disposable. I like the disposable ones. I just really didn't want to be washing out the regular cloth ones, but they make them in cloth as well. So I don't know. Let me know if you like them. For me, I say a must. The next item on my list are these freezer bags i just think that having some frozen storage bags are a must because even if you aren't trying to start a frozen milk stash right away you never know when you might have some extra milk on hand and you don't throw no milk away you don't throw breast milk away some people will advise you that you may not be pumping milk right away when the baby is born because you don't want to have nipple confusion feel like oh well i don't need to go out and get freezer bags because i'm not going to be pumping milk you never know what you're going to be doing and a lot of women have to pump like right from the start some people don't actually like having the baby at the breast so they pump milk and if you have extra you gotta have somewhere to store it in the beginning my son had a lot of latch issues so I was pumping from the very start. If I wasn't pumping, he wasn't eating. And he never experienced any nipple confusion. And then if I had extra milk, like I said, you got to have somewhere to store it. It's definitely a must. Uh, okay, we're almost at the end of the road with this video. <laughs> Are you still with me? All right. Nipple cream. Very important. A must. Um, the thing about nipple cream is that you want to use it before you need it i learned that the hard way after you have the baby usually your milk don't come in until about three to four days once you get home from the hospital even when you are in the hospital put that cream on your nipples because they go through so much transformation when you begin breastfeeding and so you might start off like oh this is fine i'm not in any pain and then out of nowhere that milk comes in and you're engorged and it's so much pressure on your nipples and the baby is latching and it's just like oh my goodness what is going on what is this fire <laughs> No, it's not fire, I promise. <laughs> it's not that bad. No, it can get really painful. So use the nipple cream 
prior to needing it. I've never actually used a whole tube of nipple cream, but man, like when I actually have needed that stuff, it has come in handy, so yeah. The next and final item is a nursing cover. In my opinion, I think that the nursing cover is a must. I think that they are very, very helpful, especially if you're gonna be nursing in public. As I've gotten more comfortable with nursing my kids and also just nursing in public, I've kind of grown tips to where sometimes I don't even need a nursing cover. I'm able to just use a receiving blanket or I'm able to wear certain clothes in a way that even if I have my shirt lifted, I'm not exposed. But I do think that they're a needed item. All right, so there you have it, guys. Breaking down some of the popular breastfeeding supply items and whether I feel they are must or bust. Let me know if you use these items and which ones were a must and which ones were a bust in your opinion. And if you are a new mommy-to-be or just a mom who is thinking about breastfeeding or wanting to breastfeed and you're kind of considering, okay, what items do I need? I hope that this video was helpful for you and thinking about choosing the stuff that you want in your inventory. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you know another mama that this might help and benefit, go on and share. Sharing is caring. So I will see you guys in the next video.